Um, I always start these things off by saying, you know, science started with Christopher Columbus. It's a very ethnocentric and European bias. But he set off and he didn't know where he was going and he got there and he didn't know where he was and he came back and he didn't know where he'd been. And he did it all with a government grant right? without acknowledging anybody who was there in the first place. And it frequently seems to me that that is the economic environment debate. Because, in fact, the thing that's missing is the crucial political element. And what I wish to do is just give you a brief introduction to the politics of the whole sustainability debate, not by locating it in the end of the 20th century with the women, and I say women quite advisedly, who drove the environment debate. It's very gendered. Rachel Carson, Barbara Ward, and Brundtland are the three critical texts to understanding where we got to. No men involved. Probably says something why environment is still a strong agenda. <coughs> gender on the agenda. And what I'd like to say about it is that as a society 200 years ago, we made, and I use the King George Bible language very, very advisedly here, because it's sexist. Right? King George is to blame, not me. Um, which is that we went from a husbandry relationship with nature, one that was organic, to one where we set out to master nature. That is what we do with the Industrial Revolution. And the fact that we do it imperfectly is neither here nor there. Like inventing the nuclear bomb, you can't uninvent it. Like setting out to master nature, look at this, the built environment, you cannot unmaster it. And growth is a very important factor. But if I was to stay with growth for just a second, you probably heard yesterday that China became uh, the second most productive country, and I use this word advisedly, country in the world. The US still remains the most productive country, and most importantly, the per capita income in the United States is $46,000 per person. China has marched up this list with a per capita income of $3,600 per person. You probably missed in the Chinese New Year celebrations here in Newcastle that they made 25 million people unemployed overnight by sending them home for the holidays. So you've got growth with issues of equity, social equity, not environmental equity, which is fundamentally important. Over the next tea break, I'll show you a short 10 minute animation of our projections to 2100 of every single resource base. And the critical issue in all of this is how do we build these scenarios? Now you can build scenarios off money, like Ben, or you can build scenarios off environment. No, you build scenarios on what politics you want. And there are six people important in politics, and they're not Blairs, and they're not Browns, and they're not Camerons. They are. You can be Thomas Matthews and blend population. You can be Ricardo and praise the market. You can be Marx and say, yes, I'll have the market, but I want to be distributed. Or you can be Rousseau and say, I want to be a happy peasant, leathers, allotment garden. Those are the four positions that are possible under capitalism. I tell you, there's no other four. Try and think of You either hate it, which Matthews did, you either embrace it, but argue about the merits, or you say, no, I just want to be a happy person. And there were some who devoid the argument of the economics. One's called Machiavelli. And I don't know how you want to describe Machiavelli, but basically, I'll, you over. I couldn't care for anybody else. Or we are Hobbes, and we close the citadel down, and nobody else is allowed here. I'll finish with two quick remarks. I don't know how true the claim was of the Labour government, but I think it was fairly true at the last election that, in fact, we had created two and a half million jobs, but we had managed only to get 600,000, I'm looking at Ben for this, 600,000 people into work from our own workforce. If we created two and a half million jobs and we only had 600,000 workers, where do you think the rest of them come from? 
and all of the multicultural debate. How were those jobs done? Unless the Polish Congress. Now out there, in the real world, in a very, very small group of humanity, dealing with humanitarian assistance, there's one massive change going on. Now, humanitarian assistance, when everything goes apeshit, is meant to be something that is delivered neutrally and impartially. And we all put our tuppence in the Red Cross box and say, that's why but the Red Cross is a 19th century organization built out of a respect for nation states and law in nation state. At the back end of the 20th century, we've got a 20th century organization, Medicine Sans Frontier. For me, the best organization in the world. For those of you who don't have French, it translates as doctors, bugger boys, right? Because you couldn't give a damn about the nation state. And until we solve the problem of the nation state, which is an anachronism, we will not solve the problem of economics or of environment. Thank you.